Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The part of God's Word we'll consider together today is taken from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter, beginning with verse 12. Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple, and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did and the children shouting in the temple courts, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. Do you hear what these children are saying? They asked him. Yes, Jesus replied. Have you never read from the lips of children and infants, you, Lord, have called forth your praise? And he left them and went out to the city of Bethany, where he spent the night. This is God's word. Dear Christian friends, during the Lenten season on the Wednesday services, we've been looking at the ironies of Lent, things that just seem so backwards. We've, we see good and moral people leaving God's house unforgiven and the worst of the worst leaving justified. We've seen people in power, powerless to carry out their plans, where one who appears to be powerless and in chains can carry out his. We hear enemies of God speaking the gospel clearly. And today we're going to see an irony in the temple itself. As the priests say, do you hear what these children are saying? Of course, you don't have to talk to children long before you realize that you never really know what they're going to say. <laughs> Just this morning... Only in a conversation with a child can you say, what are the palms about? And they say, three. <laughs> and we're going swimming. <laughs> Don't really know where their heads are at that moment. But sometimes they give a very pure expression of faith. As if maybe they can see things that we no longer can. There are stories, of course, about children expressing their faith in unexpected ways. Uh, there was uh, a, a young lady in school uh, whose faith was being challenged by her teacher who had said couldn't, Jonah couldn't possibly have been swallowed by a whale because while whales are very large mammals, they have very small throats and so they couldn't possibly, be, uh, could, couldn't possibly have swallowed a human being alive. And the, the child, you know, didn't try to argue science, just recognize if the Bible says it's true, it's true. And so she said, well, I don't know how it happened, but when I get to heaven, I'll ask Jonah. And the teacher said, well, what if Jonah didn't go to heaven? And she said, well, then you can ask him. Sometimes they say the right things. And sometimes people are offended by it. And that's what happened on Palm Sunday. Of course, we see that they were, they were in a very offensive place. Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling there. And we recognize this is the second time he's done this. He did it at the beginning of his ministry. And, of course, it didn't last long, and now he's doing it again at the end of his ministry because what, the, what his father's house is supposed to be, his father's house is supposed to be a house of prayer, a house of worship, a, a house where people can connect with God. And the reason it became a shopping mall was because on the Passover, where all the Jews came from as, as far away as they possibly could, they would come to Jerusalem to offer the sacrifices. And many of them were traveling such a long distance that it was just not possible to bring the sacrifice with them. And so God's law accounted for that. They said if you're traveling from too far a distance, you can buy your sacrifice in Jerusalem. What the people who were selling in Jerusalem did is they required 
the Jewish shekel to buy the animals. And so if they came in with money from a different territory and from a different culture, they had to trade that money in. They had to exchange it for Jewish shekels. And then they could buy their, the animal for the sacrifice. And of course, the ones who did the most business were the ones who were closest to the temple. And eventually, they just finally moved inside the temple. Not in the most holy place, not in the building itself. We recognize the temple was the building, and then there was the court of the men, and there was the court of the, of the Gentiles. They just moved into the court of the Gentiles to, to, sell their, uh, to sell their wares there. But that's not what it was for. God's house was not to focus on making a profit. God's house was there to focus on the Lord our God and everything that he has done for us and everything that he has promised for us and the love that he has for us and the forgiveness that is ours. And they lost that focus. They'd forgotten who they were and why they were there. They had become little different from the people around them. Concerned about how much money they were making. Concerned about uh, what, kind of, what kind of things that they owned. Concerned about what people thought about them. Concerned about their convenience and their comfort. Instead of concerning themselves with the things of God. And it showed in the temple. And Jesus came to clean that up. And he threw out the things that were distracting the people from worshiping the Lord their God. And in verse 14 it says, the blind and the lame came to him at the temple and he healed them. And what's interesting about this passage is that it's the only one, it's the only passage that says someone was coming to Jesus. And the irony is that it seems that the least blessed were most likely to come to their Lord. In fact, it was the very blessings themselves that were distracting people from the forgiveness and the family of God. But these people who seemed to have the least, the blind and the lame, came to him. They recognized their need. And they recognized that Jesus is the one who could heal them. So when we come to the Lord's house, the temptation, of course, is that God is lucky to have me here. I'm sacrificing my day to be here, and God better appreciate it. I'm a good person. Because I came here. In fact, I'm probably better than most of the rest of the congregation because they didn't. We're the best of the best because we're doing what God said and those other people are not. That's what kept the Pharisees from recognizing Jesus as their Savior. If Jesus had come and told them what wonderful people they were, if Jesus had come and said, I'll give you stuff, if Jesus had come and said, I will provide for you all the blessings that the Gentiles are seeking, all the blessings that the unbelievers are seeking, he'd have been the most popular guy in Jerusalem. But he didn't come to say that. He came to say, I am your Savior. It's ironic that most people don't want one. Most people would rather have people tell them, you're okay just the way you are, than to say, I know someone who can rescue you. It's our pride is a terrible thing. It's a sneaky thing. It can sneak up on us and all of a sudden we're thinking we're better than somebody else and we wonder, well, how did that happen? And then we come to the Lord's house. And God would have us focus on the Savior who came to take away our sins, who came to forgive us, who came to make us God's people, not because of who we are, 
but because of what he's done. He made us God's people by sacrificing for us. And the people who are most likely to come are the people who are least distracted by the blessings that God has given us. And it says, when the chief priests and the teachers of the law, <coughs> they saw two things that offended them. And you think about what was offending them. The first one, they were offended by the wonderful things that he did. Well, now, what wonderful things are they talking about? Of course, when we consider what's wonderful, is that a subjective thing? Because if, if someone tells you something, when would you say, oh, that's wonderful? If someone says to you, well, the game's going to last another couple hours, is that wonderful or not? Well, it depends on if you're in the game or if you're waiting for it to be over. If someone says, you know what, we've got 10 hours to shop, is that wonderful or not? Depends on if you want to shop. Yeah, Dave doesn't like it. <laughs> so what's wonderful? What wonderful things was he doing? You consider the first thing that was mentioned in this text. What did Jesus do when he came in the temple? He cleansed it. He turned over the, the, the tables of the money changers. He drove them out of the Lord's temple. Is that wonderful? Or is that offensive? Depends on if you're looking by faith or not. Jesus was healing the sick. Is that wonderful? Who could possibly think that's not wonderful? That's a good call. She's right. It is. <laughs> the things that children say. <laughs> How, who could possibly think that that would not be wonderful? People who are concerned that Jesus would take attention away from them. People who are concerned about their authority. People who are concerned about their position in the church. Here comes this nobody from Nazareth of all places. And people are going to look to him instead of to us. And so they were offended. And they were offended by the reaction of the children. The children shouting in the temple courts, Hosanna to the son of David. And they were indignant. Do we like it when people shout in the, in the church? When the kids shout in the church? Or is that embarrassing? <laughs> it depends on why they're shouting, isn't it? If they're praising the Lord our God, that should make us happy and thrilled. But if that's not our purpose for being here, if our purpose here is to maintain the dignity of the congregation, if our purpose here is to make sure that this is a very quiet place, well, then those would be unwelcome intrusions. It's ironic how many people were in the house of the Lord that were not there to worship the house of the, that were not there to worship the Lord. They were there to seek what they wanted, not what God wanted. They were there to promote themselves and not their God. Still happens. Why do people come to the Lord's house? To celebrate and to praise and to thank God? Or to find a place where they can feel good about themselves? To find a place that will serve them? Or are they looking for a place where they can serve God and celebrate His name? And so they said, do you hear what these children are saying? And Jesus said, yes. I think they wanted Jesus to be a little embarrassed by what the children were saying. But Jesus said, this is fulfillment of prophecy. Have you never read from the lips of children and infants, you, Lord, have called forth your praise? So when we sing, do we sing with the exuberance of little children? Or do we sing with the reserve of those who are concerned what the people around us might think? 
Do we sing with the joy of the Lord? Do we celebrate and exalt our Savior? Or do we try to observe the forms and the traditions that are expected of us? Do our hearts belong to the Lord our God? Or do we keep it for ourselves? What we celebrate every year on Palm Sunday is when people finally got it right. The people who were shouting and putting palm branches on the, roads and, on the road and putting their, their, their cloaks on the road. People who were saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. At the top of their voices. And it's a time where we can learn that that's where our hearts are too. Because Jesus is the most exciting thing that ever happened to us. Most exciting thing that ever will. And when we come here, we hear again that message of forgiveness. We hear again that message of welcome. That we are God's people because of what Jesus did for us. That the blessings that God has given us are not there to serve us but an opportunity to use them to serve Him so that we can encourage each other in our faith and we can share the message of life and we can remember that Jesus came to bring us home to heaven to rescue us from the things that are trapping so many people and to forgive us and to rescue us when we get trapped again. we got two more chances to sing. And we want to offer our hearts and ourselves to the Lord because of everything that He came to do for us. Amen. And the peace of God that transcends all understanding will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.